What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. Dan Banksy, DJ Fine CEO of JTU. We are Jersey Magazine and Jersey Diamonds. I'm here with the homie, Beijing. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. <laughs> Beijing is an upcoming dope videographer in Jersey, and we have a lot to tell you about her. So, Beijing, just tell me real quick where you're from. Shane. <laughs> I'm Beijing. Um, I'm from Jersey. I'm from Jersey. Um, I'm from Jersey. And, um, well, originally from California, but I'm from Jersey. And, um, you know, I direct videos, music videos, vlogs, vlogs, short films, um, anything that has to do with visual, I can do it. <laughs> I've been doing it for about, going on to two years now, but I've been doing photography for about five. Beijing is dope, y'all. Yeah. Beijing is hey. dope. So, tell me about what kind of got you into the whole videography aspect. Actually, let's do like let's start from the creative aspect. You say you've been doing photography for a while now, right? Mm -hmm. So let's start off with the photography and how you started with that. Um, I started out in uh, art school, not knowing what I wanted to do. And in the art school that I had, it was either like, okay, you're going to be a painter or a sculptor. Nobody really put emphasis on photography. And then if they did, then it's kind of like the only means of making it as a photographer is if you go commercial. So I was like, oh, I really don't want to do that too, but I think this is really cool. But um, it started with me getting together some friends that wanted to model, creating my own sets, you know, putting some real thought behind um, uh, some visuals that I did for that. Uh, there was this really cool one that was winter themed, so I had my whole model doused in glitter and nice, yeah. snowflakes and all this stuff. And there was this really cool uh, theater shoot that I did, and it had like a 1920s noir type thing. So I learned a lot about you know lighting, how to use a camera for photography um, with my major. Well, my major is visual arts, but I learned a lot of the you know the back end stuff with how to use a camera. Um, through art school, and um, you know that was kind of that. Then after art school, I was introduced to Nimi Hendrix, who is like the best in Jersey right now. Mm -hmm. And um, you know I interned for him, and just following him around on shoots, and starting to understand how to you know switch out of that photography world and switch it to video because video always intimidated me i wasn't the best editor at all i suck like i was using programs like imovie to edit wow. and just the real basic stuff i sucked really bad and then but followed nimi around you know he would apply something and then i would go home and try it too and so until eventually i um you know i just started picking up the camera more for video until I got my first um, video client and that was when I decided to try this out. And how, and how was that first video shoot? Like when did you know like after that video shoot, okay I want to keep going or you know how did that first video actually come out compared to like your firework now? Like how, like, how, how was it? My first video, <laughs> for, for, first of all, shout out to everybody that was there that helped in the process. Um, my first video, the production side was just the worst I've ever experienced. Um, no, 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 not that I've ever experienced, but it was the worst. It was, it was really bad. Um, it was bad in terms of respect level. It was bad in terms of organization, and none of which was all my fault. You know, and it was crazy because I'm a very organized person. You know, I had a team with me. I had, you know, all, a whole female team with me, which is really big for That's me. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I had a whole female team with me, and I had brought models, and then I had the concepts going, and I had a full idea of what I wanted to do and was executing it. However, <laughs> the artist side was just completely out of control and like completely unorganized. And it really gave me a, a, quite a taste of the bullshit that creatives deal with, especially with musicians and artists or come up, coming up artists, let's say that. Coming up artists um, that are trying to get out there, you know, they, they just can be the worst sometimes. So, but, you know, at the end, the video did come out, from, for it to be my first video, it came out pretty good. I'm, I'm proud of that work, and that's what kept me, you know, wanting to do more because it was kind of like, okay, 
you know, I went through that, I learned from that, I know the clients that I want to work with and the clients that I don't now. And now, you know, I know that I was able to stand up and deliver. So we just going to apply the same things to the next person and that was just a bad day. <laughs> so, but um, other than that, like, it kind of just snowballed from there. You know, I started following some people around with a camera, you know, um, shooting little interviews and shooting little blogs for people and little videos here and there. And then as, you, as soon as you know, like, people started, um, you know, inquiring more and more. I shot a lot of dope videos over the summer um, after that first year. And I think that's really what started, like, the momentum. I'm glad that you've only been doing this for two years. And then yeah. It's really just, just taken off in a whole other direction. Yeah, it did, but I feel like I still got a long way to go. Like, I study, I study, I study, I study a lot. Like, I watch what other people are doing. Even though I have my own creative style, I see what everybody else is doing, and I, I watch um, directors in different states and different countries and see how they approach vid vid visuals. Mm. I, you know, take the time to, you know, study art and, and its history and see how I can implement it to current times and things like that. I see, I try to look at like what has been done or, and then kind of tweak it to my own fit, especially when I'm practicing. But then I also love like jumping in and developing the ideas now that I have. Because before I was just, you know, seeing what somebody else did and being like, oh, I want to try that. But now it's kind of like I'm thinking of my own stuff. Like my mind is shaping to think more for stuff that hasn't been done yet versus what was done. And as you said, that, that very, very important word, practicing. Yeah. You know, for, for you, what does practice involve? Does that involve like just kind of going out there and shooting random shots or, you know, visuals of yourself in a way and like you know, from a second, third party or do you just go out and like, what, what is practice for you? Well, practice for me was involved, you know, some very key aspects and it involved shooting consistently and networking. So, you know, you can easily just pick up the camera and go outside and shoot something walking by or, you know, get your best friend and have that person, you know, shoot. And that's a cool way to learn your camera. But then, you know, a, a cool way to learn the business is by getting out there and shooting people, you know, going to different events and networking with different artists in the city that you want to work with or pe making, you know, great relations, start building relationships with people and then, you know, shoot little stuff for them too. So it's like now you're learning how to shoot someone versus shoot how you want to shoot which is kind of confusing because it's like okay this is mine so i should be able to shoot how i want to shoot but if you have someone in front of your camera that you know you don't really know you, you got to make them look good and how can you do that if you don't know the person so i like to you know develop relationships Exactly. And, uh, so you know, professional relationships before you shoot somebody, absolutely. Yeah, it's important because, like I said, you can just throw, you can easily throw somebody in front of the camera, but if you don't know who they are or what their style is or what they like, then that visual will go to waste because you have the wrong style. Let's talk about investments, right? Let's talk about like investing in your equipment because you are creative. So, mm -hmm. tell, tell everyone like how that how that process goes in and of itself. Just <laughs> investing in your equipment, period. It's always like a, when I, you know, for me it was a one by one thing. When I first started, it was you know I wasn't like I, I studied a lot. Like that's and I always keep going back to that because there's so many different ways that you can do things. And so I knew that I didn't have a big budget. I knew I didn't have thousands of dollars to start my business. I knew that I didn't have the means to start it. But what I did have was my mind. What I did have was the passion for it. And what I did have was, you know, that the ability to, to the, the dream for it. The, it never died down for me. So I didn't even have a camera. I just knew I wanted to do something. So in that time that I didn't have a camera, I made sure that I was studying, that I was perfecting my craft by being out in the field with people who did have cameras or following around people who did direct so that I could understand how shoots are supposed to be set up and how, you know, editing is supposed to be done or how, you know, lighting is supposed to be set up so that when I did have a camera, I would know how to take off from there. And um, so when I made my first investment was for my, was my camera. I had a, um, a Canon 
70D. And I shot some pretty cool stuff with that camera. That's before I was like, all right, this camera is not enough for me anymore. And then, um, so yeah, I started out with a 70D. It was like a seven, no, I want to say a four, $400 for about $400 investment. And then um, I invested into some $20 lights from Home Depot. They're portable. You plug them in to charge and then you can, you know, put them up on stands. So I bought those, I bought some portable lights, and then that was my that was my gear and <laughs> for a while. I didn't even have a stabilizer mm -hmm. at that point. So then I'm like, all right, I still got stuff that I'm missing. So what I started doing was bartering services for equipment. So I would say, listen, I'll shoot this for you if you buy this for me. I don't even take a cut, you don't even have to pay me. Like, I just want you to buy this object or this thing for me, and then I will totally shoot whatever you want as me to shoot. And that worked for a while too. So I also started racking up lenses that way. I started racking up gear. I got my stabilizer that way. So I was set. Like, and then on the flip side, I was able to also build my portfolio in the process. Once I started making profit, which was a while after that, it was a short while after that, um, I started saving up like a percentage of everything that I got until I was able to invest into a better camera that had 4K quality, that's better at low light and multiple lenses. I was able to up my within the lighting gear. I feel like when you have something, you're supposed to have it for at least six months. Not to say like you know you have to go by this, but for me, I knew that in six months' time, I should have advanced enough. I should have enough clients, enough you know uh, projects. I should have had enough time in use with this camera for me to move on to the next. And that's what happened. Six months later, I bought another camera that leveled up completely from the one that I was using. It didn't take me long to switch from Canon, like at all. <laughs> so I got out the Canon mindset and I switched over to a whole different um, platform. And yeah, it's just been ball game from there. But yeah, I, I like to upgrade every six months. Also. Yeah, but that initial investment was like 20 bucks and tw $420. Yeah, and now it's thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's about, yeah, thousands of dollars. So, <laughs> now, so now tell me about um, your production of uh, BTV. Ooh, yeah. Had you had you, uh, had you kind of run with that? BTV BTV took a long time. Oh, BTV took years for me to think of. Years. It took years. And what's the stand for? What's the stand for? Beijing televised visuals. That's what it stands for. Right. It took for it, it took years. I'm not even gonna lie. It took years because I couldn't figure out the first the, my director's name. Yeah. You know, walking running around with Mimi. Mimi's like gotta have directors and gotta have directors. And that's what people are gonna remember me by. And I'm just like. I don't know what it's gonna be, like I don't know. I don't know. I've had multiple. I've had some yeah. some weird ones. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I went through that whole phase. But um Beijing finally sat with me um last summer and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna set my I'm just gonna change my Instagram name to this and forget that I did. And then now it's like now it's my name. <laughs> now it's yeah, Beijing B T V because um it stands out. It stands out a lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say that. That's why I made me keep it. But the reason why I picked Beijing is because I have a huge hand in um, nonprofit work. And one of the projects that I did involved me being in the city of Beijing and making film over there. And that was the project that really like ignited my creative path. So I'm like, you know what? Yeah, that's going to be it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So now, lastly, your experiences with traveling, like how has it been just that demand for you and your and your creativity to just now travel out of state? Yeah. Uh, I'm, sure, I mean, I'm sure soon out of the country even. Yeah. So yeah. like to, to just be a creative, like how does that feel now? After, again, after just two years of doing of work. work yeah. yeah, you know, it's funny that you say that because I still feel like I've done nothing. Like, oh my God, I'm not even there yet. I still have a long way to go. But, you know, it does feel pretty cool to know that I'm wanted in different states and even different countries. I've had people hit me up in Switzerland that want to do collaborations, that want to, you know, do stuff. I've had people hit me up in Africa, in um, Australia, and in Japan. It's so crazy. And then, you know, in domestic wise, I've done videos in Miami, Los Angeles, you know, all around California, um, Atlanta. Now Boston, Boston. <laughs> <laughs> and a few more cities too, and those are the, the top cities. And next, I want to hit Chicago, but I mean, 
I probably have to bring a bodyguard out there. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, I still have a lot more cities that I want to hit. But it's just pretty cool, you know, because it's like, I get a lot of support in Jersey, but the support that I get out of Jersey is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, I've never even, like, wow, I, to go somewhere, it's crazy because I've had, I've been in California. And I've been introduced as someone, and then somebody, and someone saying, "Oh yeah, I've seen your stuff." Like, wow! I had went to a creative meetup one time. There's a really dope um, YouTuber. His name is Creative Ryan. I went to a Creative Ryan meetup. He's from Atlanta. He held a meetup in Philly. I went there, and there was people by myself, and there were people there that knew me. That's like, oh yeah, I've seen you do that XA video and that video. I'm like, oh yeah, that was me. Okay, that's facts. That's cool. That's cool. And a lot of clients, you know, that work with me now have worked with me because of stuff that they've seen. Like, to know that, you know, I got a, a shoot in Boston from somebody that saw me do an HD Picasso video. It's crazy. Like, that's wild. And that's why it's so important that creatives develop good relationships with artists and vice versa because you never know who's watching that artist. And if you're able to develop solid, visuals for a artist, then you never know like how far it can reach. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well you heard it here first. Creative director or something of Beijing. Hey, tell them <laughs> how they can book you, follow you, everything. Give yourself a little shout out. <sighs> you wanna book me, you can start by going to official beige oh my god, official btv.com slash contact. Send my um, my Instagram my Instagram is official Beijing. It's on all social media platforms. That's B A E J I N G. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in booking me, send the song first, and we'll take that. Take it from there. Get here first, y'all. We are Jersey Magazine, BTV. Hey, it's lit. <laughs> Jersey turned app entertainment. Entertainment.